Okay, let me give you a definition of design thinking. This is a definition by Tim Brown. In 2008, he published an extremely influential article in, entitled Design Thinking in a magazine called Harvard Business Review. And this is what he said. Design thinking is a discipline that uses the designer's sensibility and methods to match people's needs with what is technologically feasible and what a viable business strategy can convert into customer value and market opportunity. It often entails a great deal of perspiration. I'd like to share with you a short video in which Tim Brown himself explains the concept, right? Okay, did you, did you get what he said? No, you're too tired. Was it difficult to follow? Difficult to understand? Okay, basically what he says is that design thinking is extremely versatile and you can use this in lots of different situations, including your own personal life. And he refers to the five different phases or stages in design thinking. Well, this design process, he says, is best described metaphorically as a system of spaces rather than a predefined series of orderly steps. The spaces demarcate different sorts of related activities that together form a continuum of innovation. Its architecture differs from the linear milestone-based processes typical of other kinds of business activities. So put, so to put it more simply, he refers to five different phases. The first one is called empathize, which is to say put yourself in um, people's shoes, so try to understand their needs, their worries, their interests, so that you can find the best solution to the problems. Define means to frame the problem, 
that is to say, to shortly describe, briefly describe what the problem you want to solve is. Just to give you an example, think about your clear classroom. I've got a serious problem, for example, dealing with written text or oral text in English because lots of the materials I, I find on the internet are too difficult for my students and I have to simplify them and adapt them to my students' age. That could be a problem that you want to solve in a clear setting. That's defined. Ideate means to look at the problem from multiple perspectives, lots of different angles. And that's something that you have to do in, in a group, collaboratively, because you can come up with lots of different solutions. But if you work together with other people, you will find lots of different wonderful solutions to the same problem. At this stage, at the ideation stage, the important thing is to come up with lots of different ideas, regardless of whether they are crazy or impossible ideas. Then you've got the prototyping phase. At this stage, the important thing is to, to, to make a real solution using your own hands. So you can, for example, use a mind map, you can build a model, different kinds of recycled materials. So the, the point is to make the solution visible and tangible. Okay, and we'll look at different strategies to do that. And then you've got the testing phase. So once you have come up with a solution to a problem, you need to put it into practice and see whether it works or not. Are you with me? Very simple, as you can see. So you have to tackle a problem First, you empathize with the audience, the people, the users that you want to find the solution for. Then you define the problem very clearly, briefly. Then you start thinking of different crazy solutions to that problem. Then you start prototyping. You choose just two or three relevant ideas and you start designing a solution. And then you test it. You put it into practice and get feedback that is going to take you back to the beginning. This is not a linear process. It goes forth, it goes back, it depends, right? Because creativity is unpredictable. So those are the five stages, the five phases of the design process. Any questions so far? No. Okay, so let's start thinking about the pedagogical potential of design thinking. This is a very personal meditation. I mean, there's this nothing I've found anywhere, any, any chapter, any article concerning this. This is my, my own thinking, so to speak. Well, I, I would say that there are four basic lessons which, has got, which have got a tremendous pedagogical potential that we can use in our own clear classrooms. Well, in education in general. One of them is empathy, the other one is integrity thinking, optimism and experimentalism, and collaboration and active listening. So those are, to me, the four greatest advantages implicit in the whole process of design thinking. Well, design thinking is, is not a methodology. I would say it's a set of tools a resource that you can use to solve problems in your classroom practice. But it's not really a methodology, right? So empathy. Empathy is fundamental in education, in clear and non-clear settings. Well, empathy is a virtue. Do you agree with me? It's a virtue, the ability to be able to look at the world from someone else's perspective. And your students need to cultivate empathy in classroom and in their everyday life. They will need empathy when they are doing pair work or group work, when they are working as a whole class, when they are interacting with the peers, when they are interacting with the teacher. Okay, so empathy is developing a sort of sensibility towards perspectives and worldviews and points of view other than your own. For me, it's the basic ingredient the basic prerequisite for learning to happen. This is the second advantage, developing what I call non-linear forms of thinking. You've got analytical and integrative thinking. 
Analytical thinking is looking at one object, at one problem, at one phenomenon in the world, and divided in, divide in into constituent parts. So you sort of draw an anatomy of the object or the phenomenon or the problem. Whereas integrative thinking means approaching an object, a, a phenomenon or a problem in a much more holistic way from different angles, from different perspectives. And well, it seems to me that design thinking helps develop both kinds of thinking, both analytical thinking, which is necessary, particularly when you want your students to, to assimilate, to absorb curriculum knowledge or disciplinary knowledge and integrity uh, thinking as well. Cultivating optimism and experimentalism in class. Design um, thinking or designers in general believe in the power of the human creativity and intelligence to come up with wonderful solutions, no matter whether it's a serious problem or not. So no matter, no matter what the problem you, you have to tackle is, there will be a solution. And sooner or later, you come up with a solution to that problem. And then collaboration. I don't know whether you use cooperative learning in class, but cooperative learning is a good example of what I mean by collaboration. Right? I'd like to share one more video with you. You're going to watch the video. It's called Austin's Butterfly. And after watching the video, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to talk to the people sitting next to you, on your right and on your left. And you're going to put into practice one strategy that designers use very often, which is brainstorming. Do you know what brainstorming is? Right? So just watch the video. Let yourself be impressed by what happens in this video. And then spend about three, four minutes talking to the people next to you. And one person in the group of three, for example, is going to be the secretary. And is going to write down the brainstorm ideas. Right? Well, you know what? Those first graders came up with most 
lot further, like a possible suggestion. Then you add some jagged in here. And then you get rid of that bottom thing. So he did listen to his friends, and he made it that it's not perfect. Yeah, I 